to manipulate one of the disks, such as DevSDC, to add additional storage. So parted, and then we're going to make part once we're in to make a new partition, and we'll determine momentarily whether or not it'll be a primary or extended partition, but let's assume it'll be primary. And then we'll dis determine where it begins and where it ends by enumerating the partition table of the disk. So parted L enumerates the partition tables on all of the disks. So let's scroll up beyond the device mapper to the actual physical disks. So notice that this Fujitsu drive has three primary partitions. We can define a fourth. So the first runs 10 gigs, the second 1 gig, and the third 5 gigs for a total of about 16 gigabytes. So it ends at 16 gigabytes. So we can start at, let's say, 16.1 gigabytes and run through, let's say, 26 gigabytes or so, 26.1 gigabytes. So let's go ahead and indicate where we want to start. We'll use parted dev SDC, print the table, make part primary, and we'll be removing all of these partitions anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's primary or extended with logicals embedded. And we'll start at 16.1 gigabytes through 26.1 gigabytes. And this will be our partition that we create. Now of course it throws a kernel error which we've seen which means a reboot will fix things and we should set its type as mentioned the set command if you help set you'll see how to set the type so you set the number of the partition which is 4 to LVM on and then when you print it it'll show that it's an LVM partition. Let's see if there's an additional set of blocks on dev sdc so let's select dev sd or sdb that is let's print its table it's got four partitions already although there is still storage available but there is no room to define additional partitions because four primaries have already been defined so we would have to remove one of the primaries and define and extend it so we'll leave this be let's quit and since this system requires that we reboot to make these changes let's go ahead and reboot it and this will give us the opportunity to add more storage. So make part primary, in this case, 16.1 GB through 26.1 GB to give us 10 gigs of storage. And then we followed that up with a set partition number four, in this case, LVM on. And then once that's in place, we of course will assign it to the physical volume using PV create. So PV create dev SDC. This should be SDC4 when it comes back. And this assigns LVM partition to LVM management. And then once it's assigned, we'll then assign it to the volume group by using instead of VG create, VG extend. So let's go ahead and document this as well. And while we document, let's have a ping running so that we know when the system comes back. And that'll just run in the background until further notice. And in fact, we can just bring this gedit window up so that we see the replies as they come in. So we will then VG extend the name of the volume group, vol group opt as it's now called, and we'll add dev SDC4. And that's all that's required to extend the volume group, but of course to make the additional 10 gigabytes available to the logical volume, we'll have to increase the size of the logical volume by resizing it. So this at least will extend the volume group. So extends volume group vol group opt and then we will extend the logical volume using of course LV resize to a new size. So we'll LV resize and it's currently six gigabytes. We could set it 
now that there's an additional 10 available to so let's say maybe even 15 gigabytes to the location vol group opt log vol opt and this will perform an online resize resizing in the positive direction is typically easier than reducing so let's connect to the system and before we execute the PV create command let's just be sure that a dev SDC 4 is the name of the partition we see the replies coming back so we'll re SSH and once in we'll part it list and we should see for dev SDC the fourth partition running from 16 gigs so part it started at 16 to 26.1 so it's 10.1 gigs which is fine and it's of type LVM which is what's important to us to add it to our storage so let's PV create dev SDC 4 and now when we PV display we should see this additional disk dev SDC 4 and its size but it's currently unallocated so we need to allocate it to a volume group that is which means as mentioned we'll use VG extend so let's copy our command VG extend the name of the volume group and the name of the new partition one or more so if you had additional partitions you just specify them using a space delimiter before doing this let's VG display fall group op to be sure that the storage has changed so it's currently 8.23 gigs, so it should be roughly 17 point something upwards of. So now the volume group has been extended. Let's VG display once more, and it's upwards of 17 and a half gigs. Perfect. Now the logical volume, LV display log vol opt has not been upgraded. It's still, let's double check that, and that should be dev vol group opt log vol opt it is still six gigabytes so the next step if we want to take immediate advantage of this is to resize it now just one note here we don't have to resize this particular logical volume we could define a new logical volume within the same volume group and mount it independently of log vol opt that's definitely quite doable if you'd like but normally one volume group for a purpose such as opt, var, home, etc. suffices, which is why we tend to extend as opposed to defining new logical volumes. Evidenced by what the system set up, for example, during installation. One for swap, one for root, and one for home. So that is why it seems to make sense to just keep the numbers to a minimum. Now on this system, it doesn't have one for home because of the reduced storage. So it has just swap and root. But on the other system, Linux CBT Serve 2, let's take a look. If we df -h, we should see one for home, one for root, and then let's LV display on this system, and one for swap as well, because it has more storage. So we could define a different logical volume, but if we simply wanted to work with the existing logical volume, because that's where our data are, then the thing to do is resize it. So let's resize, and that's the VG extend. Let's copy our resize command to resize it to 15 gigabytes. And this will still leave some space available in the event that we need to do some more work at a later point. So let's LV resize 15 gigabytes. Now the exit status will tell us that it's clean and a re LV display of the full path. If you use a short name and it doesn't work, just reference the name from the dev tree beneath the volume group. And now we see that it's 15 gigabytes. But of course, log vol opt that's mounted to forward slash opt is still 6 gigabytes. So if you attempted to write beyond 6 gigabytes, it would fail, or the remaining 5.5 gigabytes. This means, of course, we need to extend the partition using resize 2FS. So resize 2FS, and that's going to be dev vol group log vol opt and its new size of 15 gigabytes should update the super block information in the file system to be commensurate with 
that of the logical volume that's exported. And now it reads that it's n number of blocks long. Let's echo the exit status, followed by a df-h. And now online resizing has made it 15 gigabytes. So it's available to us. Let's just note that we've resized it as an additional step. So that's resize2fs, which handles all of your ext related file systems. And that's log vol opt. And we resized it to 15g. And this also is an online resize, but of the file system layout so that we can gain access to that additional storage. So there are a number of options available with LVM with respect to being able to rename volume groups, logical volumes, being able to add and remove physical volumes after having defined the partitions and setting them to LVM. There's even the ability to scan for different volumes, a little tool that scans to see which volumes from the partition table are enumerated as type LVM. And here are the partitions across our system that qualify as LVM partition types. So a number of tools are available. Now we'll continue our studies of LVM. Next we'll take a look at the GUI tool.